is speaking very, very clearly to his people closer that we reach the culmination of time. And you have to do everything that you possibly can to remove every barrier and to remove every hindrance that might be in your way from hearing crystal clearly from God. Amen. It is so necessary that you have crystal clear hearing in the times that we're living in right now because you may miss something that is vital to your forward progression as a born again believer. Amen. Why am I telling you that? Because the Lord has clearly communicated to me that the love message is the intended message for this intended time. Amen. Well, somebody said, well, why is that? Well, one thing that I want you to understand is that the reason why the love message is the end time message is because you got to remember that the grace of God is already in play. Amen. We're living under a dispensation of God's grace and we're living under a dispensation of God's love and with that dispensation comes grace. Amen. I want you to understand beyond a shadow of a doubt that the grace of God is what encapsulates all of your needs and all of your desires. Everything that you could possibly fathom is encapsulated by the grace of God. But check this out. You cannot access those fringe benefits that's encapsulated by grace unless you do it by the access code of love. Are you listening to me? In other words, yes, the grace of God is available for everybody, but the way that you access those many benefits of grace is through the love of God. So you need love in these end times in order to access the blessings of God. And the church said, and likewise, it is the love of God that is the primary catalyst and the primary nucleus that enables us as born-again believers to facilitate our ministry of reconciliation. Amen. And what that simply means is that la da da everybody in here who is a born-again believer is called to the ministry of reconciliation. And the church said, what does the ministry of recon reconciliation mean? Well, the ministry of reconciliation simply means that now that God has blessed me and gave me what I need, when I was a stranger, I can go to some other stranger and give them the same thing that God gave me. That is our ministry. That is our purpose. That's what we're supposed to do. Amen? But check this out. How many of you know that you're not going to be too busy about winning anybody to the Lord if you're not winning in the Lord. <laughs> what? We're not going to be too busy about winning no souls to the Lord if you're not winning in the Lord. And the only way that you win in the Lord is through cultivating the love of God that has been deposited on the inside of you as a born-again believer because it is the love of God that gives you the access key to the grace of God that encapsulates every fringe benefit for every born-again believer. And the church said, Amen. Amen. And you have to know it beyond a shadow of a doubt. You have to know beyond a shadow of a doubt that nothing in this earth realm works unless it works by love. Can you imagine the one thing that we didn't think that we really, really needed? Well, I don't need love. I don't need nobody. Oh, yes, you do. As a born-again believer and as a human being, we thrive on the love of God. Are you listening to me? And we have to know beyond a shadow of a doubt, you know, you heard the cliche that love makes the world go around. I want you to know that the love of God is the stimuli to our society. Amen. It is the one thing that makes us alive. It brings us alive, glory to God. It brings health to our body. It brings prosperity, glory to God. The love of God brings about everything in our life. It has been a scientific, it is a scientific fact, it has been scientifically proven that those who experience love, those who reciprocate love, they are the ones who live a happier, longer, healthier, and more prosperous life. It is scientifically proven. Are you, but check this out. 
The scientists base that off of the natural love that we were all born with. But there's a big difference from the natural love that you were born with and the love that you inherited when you became born again. How many born again believers do I have in the house? By the show of hand, praise God, that looks like lighted out of everybody. So that simply means that you have on the inside of you the God kind of love, glory to God. You are the healing to this nation, glory to God. You are a distributor in this earth realm. And we got to do everything that we possibly can in order to distribute as often as we possibly can the love of God toward everybody that we come in contact with. Bless God, if your enemy wants to get on your nerve, the worst thing that you can do to your enemy is to love them. Because when you love them, you've just infected them, glory to God, with the God kind of love. And now they're beginning to change on the inside out. They don't even realize why they're changing. They're changing because you infected them with the God kind of love. See, we want to we get back with folk when they get with us. No, 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 no. That's not what you do. As a born-again believer, if they get on your lastest nerve, the best thing and the worst thing you can do to them is to love them to life. Did y'all hear that? Love them to life. Glory to God. Because at this point they chose to be your enemy. But because you love them and keep loving them. Now check this out. You got to be consistent in that type of love. You got to be very consistent in the love of God. And what we do, we allow their consistency to outlast our consistency. Now, how is that so? With greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. How in the world can their, out, their consistency outlast mine? Amen. In other words, you've got to remain consistent in the love of God. No matter how they act, no matter what they said to you, no matter how bad they cussed you out. You got to continue to operate, to live, to dwell and abide in the love of God. And whenever you operate in the love of God, and uh, on that level, I'm here to tell you, everything that comes from you is love. I think love. I speak love. I act love. I am love. Glory to God. Love is not only what you have, but love is who you are. It is your identity. Amen. And we need to know that. Say that with me. Love yeah. is my identity. It is who I am. Glory. <laughs> you got to know it. You got to settle it on the inside of you. Glory to God. Love is who you are. Don't ever forget that. If you forget that love is who you are, you have forfeited every ounce of your power. Love is power. The church say it. And if you forfeit walking in the love of God, you have just forfeited all the power that you have. The word of God says it like this, that God is love. Let me do it like this. God is power. Amen. How many of you know that God is all power? How many of you know that God is an omniscient being, which means he's all knowing? Are you listening to me? How many of you know that God is omnipresent, which means that he's everywhere at the same time? Amen. So if God is love, and God is all power, and God is omnipresent, and God is omniscience, that means that love is also all power, love is also omnipresent, and omniscience. In other words, this type of love can be in the same place everywhere at the same time. Amen. Are you listening to me? It's always alive, glory to God. It's what makes your relationships work. It extracts the faultiness out of an individual and brings genuineness to the surface, glory to God. To where now, you just real people. You can't help but to be real, glory to God. Because the love of God is bringing the reality of who you really are in Christ to the surface, glory to God. In eradicating everything that's on the inside of you, that's hindering you from walking and being who it is that God has called you to be. I want you to know that, well, in the body of Christ, you might come, up with some, come, come uh, upon some people who may seem to be, um, I lose this, very sensitive, uh, very, I'm sensitive in the, using this term, but they're not real people. 
Amen. I want you to know whenever you run across people like that, the only reason what makes them not authentic is because they have not, they don't have the harmony that is needed on the inside of them in order for them to be authentic. They might not even realize it. In other words, their heart, their soul, and their mind is not in sync with one another. In other words, their spirit, their soul, and their body is not in sync with one another. When your spirit, soul, and body are in sync with one another, now I have wholeness. Amen. Amen. Now that I have wholeness, I can project wholeness. Now that I have wholeness, I can show wholeness. Amen. And now that I have wholeness, I can connect myself to other people who are whole. Whole people seek out whole people. And the church said. And that's what the love of God does. The love of God brings about wholeness. On the inside of a born again believer, we're supposed to be whole on the inside out. But sometimes we like to connect with one another saying that, well, he completes me or she completes. No, 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 no. You better be complete by yourself with Jesus first and then connect yourself to somebody else who has found Jesus for himself. Or else you're going to be seeking for holiness from that individual and they don't have what you need. And then you're going to be caught up with hope deferred to where now your expectations are going to be disappointed because you sought something from somebody that they didn't have. Wholeness comes from Christ. Glory to God. Amen. So we got we to gotta understand what the love of God is. We got to understand it and begin to appropriate the love of God in our individual lives so that we can live the blessed lives that God has intended for us to live. Amen. I want you to know that the love of God is the most powerful force. I would say like this. It is the most powerful and the most elusive. So elusive to where it befuddled the devil. Every time that you respond to the love of, in, in the love of God, when somebody tries to respond to you in a derogatory way, the enemy is always confused. Are you listening to me? If you ever want to blow the devil's mind, walk in the love of God no matter what. No matter how bad it look, no matter how bad it gets, no matter how much they scream, how much they holler and treat you bad, when you walk in the love of God, it will blow the devil's mind. Are you listening to me? Are you listening to me? <laughs> this morning I want to teach on a message that is entitled, How to Love God for Real. How to love God for real. In the process of teaching um, this series, I have come to an area in the Gospels to where it was necessary for me to take a, to camp out, amen, so that we can bask in the anointing, in the revelation of the great commandment, amen. And we talked about how necessary it was to love yourself. And we know through that teaching that you can't really say that you love somebody else when you're treating yourself bad. I say you can't say that you really love somebody else when you don't know how to treat yourself. You got to love yourself first in order to love somebody else. It says to love your neighbor as you love yourself, as you love yourself, as you love yourself. Now, some people tried to water that thing down and say, well, if you do that, then it's going to get you in the area of selfish. And no, 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 your neighbor, as you love yourself, I want you to know he's talking about agape love. And agape love is the same love that they're talking about in the book of 1 Corinthians, where it talks about that it is not selfish. There's nothing selfish about agape love. Amen. And we have to know beyond a shadow of a doubt, some people say that, you know, that's one of the most hardest things for an individual to do is to love their neighbor. No, what's more harder than that is to love yourself. 